three of the biggest backswing mistakes that could be affecting your ball striking, the distance that you hit the shot, and your accuracy. And do you know what? They do affect every standard of golfer. So what I want you to do is once you've watched all three, let me know actually in the comment section which one you might fall into. So let's get into it. Mistake number one. And just remember, I will put a free downloadable practice guide in the description box below so you won't have to remember a thing. So mistake number one. Let's start with what all great players first of all do in the downswing so we know the purpose of the backswing. All great players, really simply this, they approach this shaft angle, they approach this shaft angle at a roughly 45 degree position. Not here, not here. Why is it there? Well, it allows two things to happen. We play a sport on the ground. So the first thing it allows us to do is for the club to naturally fall down to the ground, whether it's a driver or their irons, right? The second thing it allows it, being at this angle, it allows you to rotate the body through the shot so that the body can control the club face and generate power through the shot. So achieving this angle on the way down is super, super important. So you need to make sure your backswing is spot on. Mistake number one stops this from happening. Excessive rotation of the forearms and the shoulders, so your shoulders end up getting way too level in the backswing. When you have excessive rotation here, your body has to then go, well, I'm not playing baseball, the ball's down there, your body reacts and then goes, I need to hit down on the golf ball. This gets the shaft steepening, which fine if you just wanna hit down on the golf ball, but shocking when we want to get into this position here, right? So that creates a steepness. You end up reaction sometimes standing up. When you stand up, you get flicky. So it affects so many things, strike, distance, you name it. So how do we therefore get into a great backswing position? Well, the first thing you're going to do to stop that, just imagine your lead shoulder at the top of your backswing stays lower than your trail shoulder, okay? You can do this by imagining your eye line staying at a 45 degree angle as you look back just for a second, but just imagine your lead shoulder stays nice and low in your backswing here, all the way back and all the way through. You could improve this just a little bit by maybe focusing on your hands. Sometimes the hands can get kind of moving to the sky. Look at my palm here. If you excessively roll it, the palm faces the sky. So you could, if you wanted, just to imagine the palms facing the ground in that first section. But whatever it takes to get that lead shoulder nice and low in your backswing. On the way down from here, look, well, you don't have to do anything. It's already there. Now you can just bring the club down into your impact position, and that's going to hugely affect your quality of strike. Let's have a look at this in action. So I'm gonna imagine actually my lead shoulder going down, I'm actually gonna imagine it going up on the way through. So we also get both the backswing and the downswing side with this. So look at this in action. Not too bad. Right, so mistake number two. Number three is the biggest, so stay tuned for number three. But mistake number two involves this. See if you can spot what I'm doing. Can you see this? What's wrong with this? Too much sway. If you want to strike a golf ball, you've got to make sure that at impact, particularly the irons, you want to be stern, you want to be over the ball, you want to strike the ball, then the ground. If you start to sway off the ball here, you're going to potentially start to strike the ground behind the golf ball, hitting up on the ball, starting to get these kind of buckled chicken wings. But it's not just that. You may have seen yourself swaying and you try to stay still, but that's not the answer too. Staying still and trying to stay over the golf ball to strike it is not the answer because now there's not enough room. You kind of get stuck. You start flicking at it. What do you need instead? You need to make sure that the golf swing acts as almost like two pistons, right? So linking to mistake number one, what happens to this lead shoulder? it goes down and the trail shoulder goes up. So now look, imagine this. Pew, pew. What we're doing is, is we're pissing the swing. Lead shoulder goes down, fire it down here and then look, fire this one down. One, two. Simple way you can work on this. Keep it dynamic. Get a, I've got a squeaky here. It's like a little toy from a pet shop. Put it under your trail heel. And what you're going to do here, look, is this. We don't just kind of do this, this is static. I want the whole body to help you create this piston. So your feet, your body, everything. And look, it's this, when I do, when I move my body like this, it stays very centered. Watch, one, two. Very different to 
No squeak there, why? Because I'm hanging back. If I'm staying dead still, no squeak, why? Because I'm just rock solid. But when you put like this, and now we go one, two, can you see here my body's working like a piston. My shoulders, look, are staying in their inclination. So look, we can easily come back down on the line that we want and start to strike those shots. If you are practicing this, what I'd probably do is I would start very, very small initially. So grab a few balls, get yourself set. And what I'd do is this. I'd just go up to here, get a feel for it, and then fire up to about halfway. Fire, get used to the piston style action. Here, one, two, very different to rotating off the ball. We don't want that. Just literally one, two, one, two, yeah? So let's have a shot. I'm gonna hit a couple of little shots, just one little shot, just showing you this, little piston working. It might not reach the green. Just gonna go up, down. So just a tap forward, right? So no big shots, won't reach the green, but just a tap forward. That gets you working this club like a piston. Right, mistake number three, and this one is a biggie. But before we get into it, if you do enjoy the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and come and join the community. I press that subscribe button and the bell. I release videos just like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. So, number three, trying to put the club into position in the backswing as opposed to swing the club into position. How do you get into all these wonderful positions in the backswing without putting them there? Well, you've, we've looked at the first two mistakes. Well, what you wanna try and do is if you wanna get your lead shoulder low, you don't wanna kind of force it down, you wanna allow it to flow. But too often what I'm seeing, I don't know if you're the same, but I'm seeing golfers trying to copy the best players by trying to get it there get it into this position, get it into that position, and then they wonder why they can't hit the ball very well, because it's not a golf swing. The clue's in the name, it needs to be a swing. So, that means you have to accept that sometimes you're gonna be imperfect during the learning process. So, let's say we're working on mistake number two, uh, uh, sorry, one with the shoulder, we're gonna allow you to just flow look. So I'm gonna practice this lead shoulder staying down, but I'm not gonna practice it by going, Stiff, I'm gonna see if I can just add some flow to this, backwards and forwards, right? Then it'll start to feel more natural. With mistake number two, we're gonna add some flow to the piston, yeah? Backwards and forwards. It might not be perfect, but it's as close as you're gonna to get to start with, and then gradually you develop it. What I often do with some of my students, I even get them to add flow to the whole motion so that they don't just stay static over the golf ball, thinking, thinking, thinking. So we do something like this. We get into a situation where they pick their target out. They walk to the golf ball. They get themselves set and they add just flow to this motion, right? Not the finest strike in the world, but they're adding flow to the whole motion. So whatever you're working on, make sure it's flowing, all right? Now, I've got a more detailed video on rotation that you can access right here. But if you enjoyed the video, remember to give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one of your friends, and of course, look, come on the joining community by pressing that subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already. But until next time, have a great golfing week.